When we talk about the Indo-Iranians and the Indo-Aryan migration into India, we often think of it as a single migration event, but we forget some very important details about it, like how a lost Central Asian civilization influenced and shaped their culture. Let's rewind back. Around 4000 BCE, the Indo-Europeans emerged in the Pontic Caspian steppes. These people were ancestral to every Indo-European group today, and their culture heavily revolved around horses. They spoke a language called Proto-Indo-European, words for mother, father, brother, sister, horse, and fire in every other Indo-European language were descended from the Proto-Indo-European term for those words. Around 3000 BCE or so, a branch of the Proto-Indo-Europeans migrated west and formed the Corded Ware culture over many centuries the ancestral group of most of Europe today. One of these subgroups was the fatienovo balanovo culture. Over the next thousand years, they migrated farther south, changing and mutating their language on the way. By 2100 BCE, they established and formed the Sintashta culture. The language of the Sintashta was a daughter language of the Proto-Indo-European, Proto-Indo-Iranian. The linguistic change occurred over many millennia. The language went through a change called the Ruki change. This rule states that the S sound became the SH sound and the K sound becomes the S sound after the consonants R, U, K and E. Take the word for a hundred in Proto-Indo-European, for example, Kumtum. In Proto-Indo-Iranian, this became Chetam or Shatam. The Proto-Indo-European word for horse, Ekwos, became Hachwa in Proto-Indo-Iranian. Similarly, Gonu became Janu, Ghormos became Gharmas, Okto became Hashta, and Hugnis became Hugni. By the time the Sintashta culture was established, these changes had taken place. The Sintashta were none other than the Proto-Indo-Iranians. They were the first people to invent and use the chariot, called Hrathas in Proto-Indo-Iranian. This was a major advantage to them, travel and warfare-wise. Not too many centuries later, the Sintashta was followed by the Andronovo culture in Central Asia. From there, they went two paths, one to the Iranian plateau and one to the Indian subcontinent. But wait, there's something we're missing here. In this area, near the Sir and Amudarya rivers, the Indo-Iranians seem to have adopted many things from local cultures, such as the very culturally important Soma drink, various loanwords and even deities. This area was a missing link in our story. This area was the home of the Oxus civilization. You've probably never heard of it, and I don't blame you. The civilization had built great fortified cities, like the one at Gonor Tepe, and were a highly advanced civilization comparable to the Harappans and Mesopotamians. Yet we don't hear about it much today. But this ancient culture had a huge impact on Indo-Iranian culture. The Oxus civilization also known as the Bactria Margiana Archaeological Complex, or the BMAC, also had a significant impact on Indo-Iranian culture. The BMAC was a collection of Bronze Age settlements that stretched across modern-day Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and Tajikistan. Archaeological evidence shows that the BMAC and the Indo-Iranians were in contact with some of the BMAC settlements showing signs of Indo-Iranian cultural influence. We see that when the Indo-Iranians started interacting with the Oxus, they picked up many loanwords that entered Sanskrit, such as the word for Soma, yeast, camel, canal, beast, a fire priest, and needle. And so the Indo-Iranians went through some linguistic changes here. Apart from this, the drink of Soma was also adopted from the Oxus. Soma was a very important ritual fermented drink that was a core part of the Vedic, ancient Iranian, and Zoroastrian religions. It was likely made from a plant called ephedra and was treated as a holy elixir. This was something uniquely Indo-Iranian and other Indo-European cultures lacked soma. Fire rituals are also highly probable to have been adopted from the Oxus. In some archaeological sites of the BMAC, fire altars with pots have been found. These pots have been found to have traces of a fermented drink that is suspiciously similar to soma. And so the Indo-Iranians not only went through some linguistic changes, but also a huge cultural change as well. Deity-wise, it is possible that many Indo-Iranian goddesses like Anahita and Saraswati were influenced from the Oxus goddesses. The god Indra is also possible to have been borrowed from the Oxus religion, 
and was probably substituted with the Indo-Iranian god Viretragna. After the cultural exchange between the two groups, the Indo-Iranians split into the Proto-Iranians and the Indo-Aryans. But there is another interesting path, which leads not to South Asia, but to the Middle East. I'm talking about the Mitanni. The Mitanni were an empire that established themselves in modern-day Syria around 1650 BCE. While the Mitanni common folk spoke a native language called Hurrian, the elite and nobility spoke an Indo-Iranian language that is similar to Sanskrit but written in Mesopotamian cuneiform. For example, in a treaty between the Mitanni and the Hittites record the invocation of Indo-Aryan gods like Varuna, Indra, Mitra, and the Nasatyas. Another Mitanni text known as the Kikuli Horse Manual share many Indo-Aryan words, such as basic numbers and the word to turn. Even the Mitanni's royal names are similar to Sanskrit and Iranian names. This highly suggests that after the interaction with the Oxus, a branch of the Indo-Aryans migrated west and settled in Hurrian-speaking lands, bringing their culture and deities along with them. Meanwhile, the Indo-Aryans migrated into the Sapta Sindhu and composed the Vedas, while the Proto-Iranians founded the Yaz culture, which was built off earlier Oxus sites, and then migrated into the Iranian plateau. This explains why modern Iranians have a lot of Oxus DNA nowadays, but modern Indians do not, since the Indo-Aryans never settled in Oxus areas permanently and immediately migrated afterwards. In conclusion, the Indo-Aryan migration into India was not a single migration event, but rather a series of cultural exchanges that occurred over centuries. The lost civilization of the Oxus, also known as the Bactria Margiana archaeological complex, played a significant role in shaping Indian culture, language, and religion. The BMAC influenced the Indo-Iranians in many ways, including their adoption of Soma, fire rituals, and loan words that entered Sanskrit. Furthermore, the Mitanni Empire established itself in the Middle East, and their elite and nobility spoke an Indo-Iranian language similar to Sanskrit. This series of events shows how complex and interconnected ancient history can be, and how various cultures and civilizations have shaped one another. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.